look at the Pats defense this season. They are giving up the fewest points per game this year, 15.4. The run defense is allowing, however, over 114 yards per game. That's 19th in the league, but their pass defense, third in the NFL, allowing just over 195 yards per game. That is where we begin the deep dive with Tom E. Curran and Phil Perry. Curran, do you want to tell me I'm crazy for even I being do. nervous? I want to call you a slave to the moment. I want to call you... It's um, possible. Yeah, possible. Reactive. It'll be the first time. Uh, I mean, were you singing the same song when the Patriots beat the Jets or the Texans or anybody else, the Cleveland Browns? Look, yeah, it's nice that Kansas City was able to pummel a Raiders team that has since checked out. But, I mean, it's it, don't, don't, Frenny. Come on, you're smarter than this. Those teams all have their flaws. The reason I wrote that story as to why, Phil, these Patriots are not like the 2019 Patriots are, they are so oh, all across the board complementary. They don't have an offense they're trying to drag with them as they were in 2019. The Patriots continue to be the most complete team in football. They are solidly built across all phases. And I'm not sure we can say the same about even those three teams that you mentioned, Trini. I mean, the Chiefs, to me, are a bit of an apparition right now. Their defense is really what's carrying them. That's the scariest part of their team. If you look at the games that they've played over the course of the last two months or so, outside of the Raiders, okay, outside of the Raiders, they've scored like 20, 19, 13, 3 points total in those games. The Raiders just do something that not any other team in the league has done against the Chiefs that's given the Chiefs problems this year. They say, no, we're going to do what we do. And they've given up 40 twice now in the course of the last month against the Chiefs. So that's, that's going to be the competition for the Patriots moving forward. But they are flawed. I, I would say significantly more so than the Patriots from what we know about them right now. Trini, I think a lot of your trepidation, some of it comes from Mac Jones. And that's okay. Yes. You have to yes. see what you have to see. But I think that a lot of your trepidation might be rooted in a comparison to, look, the Patriots haven't really beaten any teams kind of the way that 2019 team did. They lost to the Bucs. They lost to the Cowboys. The Bills game was weird. So you're saying the same thing. Here's what I tried to make a point of in that column was that 2019 team was such an anchor offensively, and we saw it down the stretch where they went four and five in their final nine games. They couldn't stop teams because they were on the field all night defensively because the offense couldn't convert. This year, they have a running game. They have an offensive line. They have a complementary set of wide receivers and a tight end. Trini, this team is built to be able to withstand different things, and we're going to find out this week because the Colts are going to probably press Trini in an area where the Patriots haven't been challenged. They're a fast-starting team. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, the Patriots' offense in a second, but the, the crux of your article was, hey – don't look at that 2019 boogeyman defense mm -hmm. and, and that they were paper tigers. That's not what we have here with this Patriots defense. Why do you think this one's different and built for, built for those big games? Because of the offense. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the offense. Phil, I'm going to lob it to you. It, it's, they had some kick-ass players on that team. This one can get pressure defensively in a way that that one could not because of Matt Judon. I think they're a little bit better against the run because of the presence of Barmore. But this defense now, it has an offense that doesn't have it on the field all night the way the 2019 team did. Yeah, I think they are more balanced overall, and so that's why you can trust the entire team a little bit more. I do find it fascinating, though, in terms of the defense specifically, Trent, if you want to focus in on those, on those guys on that side of the ball, they really, over the course of their winning streak, they've played one very good passing game, and they beat them in the Chargers. But the Buffalo game was strange. They haven't really, you know, Matt Ryan and the Falcons, mm -hmm. the Carolina Panthers, one of the worst passing games in football. Baker Mayfield was hurt. They didn't have any of their running backs that week. I mean, they have seen some offenses in disarray during this winning streak. There's no doubt about that. Phil, let me ask you this. If the Patriots want to get to the Super Bowl, win a Super Bowl this year, can they do it behind this defense? Is this a good enough defense to carry the offense in the so that they don't have to come back so they're not in that position to put Mac Jones there yeah and they really haven't been in that position for about two months now right I mean you could go and look at it and the number of snaps they've played when they are down a touchdown or more in the third or fourth quarter during the you know the last two months say since week five it's like less than 20 it's <laughs> unbelievable when you compare it to the rest of the league so he hasn't been in that position and I think the defense Tom is good enough 
to keep them out of those spots. But I think they still are going to see a couple of tests here down the road. I would say the, the Colts this coming week and the Bills at Gillette Stadium, if the weather's a little bit nicer, will be a real test for this defense too, and we'll know more then. Yeah, and I think that a legitimate deficit is double digits. You know, seven in the second quarter, who cares? Yeah. Uh, to me, we would have to see that. But again, I really don't think, and we've talked about this, every single time Mac Jones is faced with one of these, I don't know if he can do it, he does it. And part of the reason I think he would be able to do this is the level of poise. If we watch a Derek Carr, for instance, or even a Baker Mayfield, and you see their feet just start pattering around and their hand, already Jones doesn't have that in his array of weird quirkiness in the pocket. He sets his feet, he gets the ball out. He sets his feet, he gets the ball out. I just don't think even when the deficit's there that you're going to see a kid come unglued. And I would say, Trenny, two areas that we've seen from Mac Jones already where he's been pretty good, and I saw Ted Johnson mention this on Sports Sunday last night, the two-minute drill, he's looked sharp. I would also say on third and long, the mm -hmm. Patriots have been one of the best passing offenses in the league. So those two elements would tell you if they do get down, they have the ability to make those plays through the air if they need to. Well, let's stick with talking about the offense. Here's what Kern wrote about it today. He wrote, quote, the Patriots have allowed 36 points in their past five games. Yes, their defense has bludgeoned some bad quarterbacks, just like the 2019 Patriots did. But this year's offense more than pulls its weight. The offense is balanced, which even though it doesn't have an all-time talent like Brady or Edelman on it, is way harder harder to defend and the offensive line can play whichever game you like run or pass current are you I know you're not saying that well maybe you are saying that this offense is better than the offense with Brady and oh, Edelman uh, yeah it's not even comparable that offense was so terribly flawed built around you know Marshall Newhouse was patrolling the left tackle spot um, they couldn't open any he? holes you had 3.7 yards per carry, Sony Michelle, and it really wasn't his fault. He had so much company every time he got the ball. There were no tight ends. Ben Watson was revived to come back. God bless him. Thank God he was there because they had nobody else out there except for Ryan Izzo. It was a disastrously compiled team. Mohamed Sanu and Antonio Brown were brought in. Neither one worked out for various reasons. Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady was at the helm of a sinking ship. And what is this offense at its core, right? They are a game plan team. They want to be able to adapt to the situation, no matter what that situation is, on a weekly basis. And now, with the group they have, they can do that. I asked Josh McDaniels today, hey, if you're faced with a circumstance, whether it's because of the scoreboard or the conditions or anything else, where you're forced to throw it as often as you ran it in Buffalo, would you be comfortable doing that? He said, yeah, of course. A lot of trust in Mac Jones. We have trust in our ability to be able to do multiple things. Dante Scarnecchi on Next Pats last week, he says, this team can do both, mm -hmm. and that makes them so hard to defend. They're going to be able to run it in the mid-20s in terms of the number of attempts any week they want because of the line and the backs they have, and they have a quarterback and enough of a passing game in terms of the weapons on the outside that could sustain a, a, you know, a passing game as well. So they are they're deep offensively training and they can attack it however they want wild stat training yeah. in 2019 Edelman and James White combined for like 170 catches for 1600 yards and the leading rush of that year was 900 yards Michelle I think right now between Harris and Ramondre Stevenson those two are at about 1700 yards Phil am I mistaken that sounds right sure yeah I might, I might have <laughs> sure. just blown mm -hmm. that uh, that might be over the top um, but they're on pace for that, at least. It does so. feel like they're the kind of team that, it, you know, in 2019, you could just put your best defender on Julian Edelman, take him out of the game. And they would send three at him. And now you, there's, you don't have that one no. person. You can't stack the box because then you leave decent receivers open. Or if you're, if you're blanketing receivers, they'll just run the ball on you. But is there a guy, and is it Hunter Henry, Curran, that if they need that big play, who do they go to? Well, that is that is what's going to be fascinating to watch because – Got to have it third and six. Is it Josh McDaniels has to craft it and figure out who that guy is and what the matchup is? Or do they have somebody who is that much better than the guy across from him that they can win with? I don't think that they have it, Phil. I think it's kind of the beauty of this offense is that you don't really know who the guy has to be in those spots. If I had to guess, I would say it's still Jacoby Myers. I think they trust him above most of, of their pass catchers at this point. But, again, they can pick and choose the matchups and the situation depending on what's going to work for that them. That puts a lot on Josh, though, and that puts a lot on Mac Jones when you don't have a guy who is, uh-oh, we don't know what to do with this guy.